You are watching Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the April 25th, 2023 meeting of the LaPorte County Plan Commission. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. We're going to call the meeting for the Port County Planning Commission for Tuesday, April 25th to order. All please rise, stand and pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you have your phones, please turn them on silence or mute or off. Roll call, please. Tony Hendricks. Here. Joe Haney. Present. John Carr. Here. Rita Beauty. Here. Harold Parker. Present. Deb Vance. Here. Earl Cunningham. Present. Glenn Minnick. We have a quorum. Approval of the agenda as presented. Make a motion to approve the agenda. It's a second. It's a motion to second to approve the agenda as presented. Any changes, additions, corrections, deletions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Approval of the minutes from, looking for the meeting date. March 28th. March 28th. Move to approve the minutes. Second. The motion to approve the minutes as presented for March 28th. Any changes, additions, corrections, deletions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Petition, petition one, petitioner loves travel, truck stops. Country Stores Incorporated, represented by Say So Incorporated, present the Platte Committee with a proposed plug, fueling stations, convenience store, restaurant, a truck tire repair facility located at the intersection US 421, County Road 300 North, Michigan City, Indiana, Cool Spring Township, Zone B3, consisting of 56.397 acres. How do we... Legal, is this notice acceptable? We... Notice is adequate. All right, thank you. So we'll open the floor to the petitioner, either say so or loves. Hello, my name is Mandy Goss, I'm the CESO. Um, Frank Lee is also here with loves if there's other questions loves specific that you could answer. Uh, we appreciate your time tonight to take a look at our item on your agenda. Uh, the package in front of you, I know you guys have seen a few times before. Um, there has been some minor changes to it, um, so I'll just kind of briefly explain those and then obviously we'll be happy to take any questions that you might have. Um, one of the items before you is the change in the building. Before we had a larger building, they have removed the Chessers, so there's only two restaurants within it now, the Taco John's and the, um, of course I bring this one blank. Oh, and the Godfather Pizza. So those are the two um, restaurants that are going to be within the Love Travel Stop. We have also removed the truck wash. There was two truck wash bays previously on the plan. Um, and do you want me to share my screen to share the plan, or do you guys have that in front of you? We have copies from the planning commission. Okay, sorry, I just thought about it after. Um, so, and so what is um, the truck wash was removed, the two bays, and it actually went back to a four bay speed coat. Um, so those are the changes on the site that were made. Um, with that, there were some signage changes to remove the Chester signage, and then to add the Speedco signage. So the sign package was also updated. Is there anything specific, um, you know, you have questions on, please let us know. I know you guys have seen this a few times, so I won't go into too much detail. Um, everything else remained the same. There's still nine truck fueling positions, um, 16 auto fueling positions. We did add some auto parking um, with the decrease in the building size. The one row next to the drive through became like a double row. So that went from 78 to 87 parking spaces, just to kind of point that out. Um, those are really the main changes in the plan. The truck parking remained the same in 114 space. Okay, anything from building commissioner? Yes, Mr. President, I have a question. Um, this is regarding the square footage. So when we, we were here the last time, um, I wanted to make sure that you're asking for everything that it is that you need or foresee that you would need. Uh, the prior uh, approval consisted of 10,000 to 14,000 square feet was the range. Um, once we got into it, 
uh, the actual square footage and size of the plan was more than the 5% discretionary authority that I have to approve of and be, uh, above and beyond the board. Thus, it requires them to come back here for uh, that approval. So we're looking for the square footage. The actual square footage of the building is 16,407 square feet for the Love's Travel Stop. And if, if I can speak to that, that was my fault. I thought that I would have given a range that would encompass what the building is. And quite honestly, I didn't know we built this size of building nowadays, which we do. It's, it's called a tier zero, which I've talked about in this meeting before. So this will be the, the premier. We only have nine of them open around the country. This is kind of the premier building that we are doing at special locations or Locations we think are going to have the highest traffic. So I didn't realize that those buildings had grown to over 16,000 square feet. So that was my fault. Um, we decided to, I'm just explaining the three changes. That's number one. That's the reason we're back here this month. Um, number two is the elimination of the truck wash. And the reason we did that was to uh, enhance the flow of traffic around the site. We just thought that having the two truck wash bays, the three bay tire shop, that's five total bays, and it's kind of a tight site because we had to work our landscaping around the pipeline. We thought that was a little bit too busy for the trucks, so we wanted to ease their traffic a little bit, ease their traffic flow a little bit. So we got rid of the truck wash. Um, in doing so, that allows us to have a speed co. And so the third change is uh, I'm trying to add, I'm asking you all to add, ask us, asking you all to allow us to add the speed co signage to the pylon sign out by the interstate. So that's an increase of 185 square feet to the pylon sign. Sir, do you feel that uh, a range, a uh, square footage range like the last time would be uh, a good thing to ask for, or do you want to go with sure. the exact amount? <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. We, we, Can we open up the range to like 10,000 to 40,000 and whatever you <laughs> do in between? We don't want to hold you up. We want you to have the ability to start moving. Well, and I'll, and I'll tell you that we, I told everybody not to stop, that this was my mistake, and then I would, I would come back and beg for your forgiveness. But um, we, do, we do plan on starting construction on this location uh, in, in the month of May. Um, <laughs> barring anything uh, unfortunate going on tonight with this meeting. But um, so if you want a range, I can say 14 to 18,000 square feet. And I'm pretty positive now the building is 16,407, just like Mandy said. But I don't mind being a little safe and saying 14 to fourteen to 20, whatever you want me to. Yeah, because he only has 5%, and that's small. Right. If anything changes. The tier zero description sounds uh, exciting, though. Uh, yeah, so we get a bigger place. Yeah. In my opinion, if you said 10 to 20, he's, it, I don't think he'll ever meet go under or over that range. And we had an issue with, uh, there was a, the I-94 sign was originally off-site, and that was actually corrected prior to the previous hearing. Is, is that, am I remembering that correctly? Yes. Okay. Out lot one has changed, so they have frontage on 94. So we just have the... Uh, Proposed changes in front of us. Then. Yeah, I would present. Well, we'll open the floor to any public comments for or against the petition. We'll open the floor for any public comments for or against the petition with the changes, additions, corrections. Anyone on Zoom? Hearing none, so I would presume, and Doug can help us, we're going to ask for approval of this submitted planning and development with all changes he has. And a range up to the board of, I would think, 10,000 to 20,000 to make sure whatever they cover, additions or lose, might can be covered to get this bill. So you need that stated in a, a motion. I'll motion that, whatever you just said. There's motion to approve with any changes and <laughs> corrections to the plan unit development with a range for the main building between 10,000 and 20,000 square feet. I'll second. This motion is second. Any other discussion? We need to hear. Do we need to add the uh, reduction of the, the truck wash? Yeah, the, the, the motion includes this plan 
that you're seeing in front of you? The truck wash, the signs, and everything? Yeah, I got it all. Got it. Okay. Anything else? Um, I'd just like to reiterate the importance of working with the local trades and contractors on this project. We appreciate that. Yes, sir. I would like to thank you on behalf of the rest of the members of the board, I'm sure, as well, for your patience. And uh, out of curiosity, is this a record for the longest it's ever taken you to get construction started on a Loves? Unfortunately, unfortunately, not even close. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Oh, good. Sure. Wonderful. I worked on one in Oregon for seven years, and we have we have one that uh, one of my colleagues worked on for twelve. So, I just thank you for your perseverance, especially with the pipeline that took a very long time, and and that is something to behold to get that pipeline moved. With all that, uh, motion thank to approve. All those in that favor, say aye. 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 Post. Thank you very much. Godspeed. Thank you. Thank you. I hope yeah. the next time. I hope the next time we see each other, it's at our store. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. Any old business that other than solar discussion? I looked at if anyone's seen the news, Porter County rescinded its solar ordinance. And they do not have an ordinance in place. I had talked to the Porter County Stormwater Management or Engineer Mike Novotny, and I thought he was going to give me their proposed solar ordinance because he said there's lots of things that are happening that we need to protect ourselves and the individuals in our county that would wish to do these main big solar projects. And Harold and John, we all worked on that too, but they didn't put anything in place. And that's here in our last Porter County. I don't think we would even entertain that because that leaves us open to really no ordinance. So we do need to discuss, and Mike had some good emails this afternoon, and I just got back to it. And I look, there's a lot of stuff coming online very fast. There are portals with lots of information, what everyone is talking about, and I kind of put together just a quick highlight points that we need to look at. But the main one is the decommissioning. Solar panels can last 20 years to 80% capacity and then they'll run slowly degrade and they could be 50, 75 years to zero, but you're gonna have to dispose of them somehow and they're not friendly to dispose of. Stark County and Jasper County and Pulaski County, I believe, have some decommissioning wording, but I don't think it's tight enough, neither do they. If you're talking about 13 square miles that are happening in Pulaski and Stark County, it's a lot of panels. And Porter County was thinking the same thing. How do we guarantee that if it all goes south, because typically these companies, if they get below 80%, they want to replace the panels. They don't want that less than 80%. Now, many homeowners can just let them run until they're nothing because who cares? You know, you're not going to pay for them. But a big field of panels, they're going to start replacing them. Or if they walk away, and, and over the last months I've been looking at it, that I would want, some people want insurance, some people want a bond, something. But you talk 50 years out or 20 years out, those companies might not exist anymore. The bond company might give you a bond that doesn't exist, it's worthless. One insurance policy, that could just not, the company's not there anymore. Stark County talked about some escrow. Porter County's talking about some escrow. Now, I understand that's a big charge, but these are billion-dollar companies, so... Um, I think we need something, and we're looking for information from the plan commission to the attorney to add something to our ordinance that either is some escrow, either a lump sum in the beginning, or they worked up to a payment in an escrow or in 5, 10, 15 years, so we know when somebody's there. Or I see now people are putting a lien on the property. So typically the companies are leasing these fields, and when they leave, if the the companies are selling these off to other companies, so the first company that has leases might not be the company you end up with. Porter County's having trouble with that too. So we're going to need some legal advice, and I think everyone's looking at this now. If they leave, then the owner of the farm field, which is not ruined, they could take the panels off and still farm it, but somebody's got to pay to take those panels off, and we know what's going to happen. It'll be the government that gets charged to take those panels off. Can we put a lien on their property? And my thought is if we... It's not very nice, but if we put a lien on their property for hundreds of acres, they know coming in the front that they'll get a lien on their property. They might make the person paying the lease pay the escrow up front instead of potentially putting a lien on their family farm. That's some discussion that I think 
everyone is having right now. How do you guarantee that? Well, I just uh, thought about what about inflation? If we're talking about something 50 years away. Yeah, some people, that's a good point. Some people want an independent engineering study, which they have to pay for to say what the decommissioning costs. Then mean. they want a new study every five to 10 years to make sure the inflation hasn't gone up or down to dispose of them. Maybe 20 years from now, they might want these. Who knows? Maybe they don't. But they want it independent because what they're seeing from the companies leasing them, they're giving engineering studies on decommissioning costs and they're nowhere near what they really are. We've got the requirement in the initial application, but I don't think we have an update requirement, which is a good idea. This is moving very fast and people are moving quickly to protect themselves, the government. So you're going to have to have some kind of inflation. Or right some sort of, uh, every five years, a new... Money. You've got to have a... Okay. Well, I don't know what good a lien would do, other than you're going to get the property if they can't, if, you know... Yeah, we would take the property, sell it, decommission the panels, and then whatever money's left, they get back to the person who owned it. That's kind of what, bad. What size of facility would, would these uh, regulations come into effect on? Are we talking about... That's a good question, because I did see people are looking at small, medium, and large now. Because, I mean, I, I don't want to hamstring a homeowner that has yeah, I don't either. 20 panels on there. Yeah, we, we've, I, we've, I, got, we've already got that covered. Okay. We did different categories, and aren't the ordinance that we passed already. Okay. So we do, so we do in our current ordinance have have some of that here. Um, probably need to look at tightening it up. But you know, for example, it says um, financial assurance in an amount uh, at least equal to said demolition and removal uh, contractor cost estimate through the use of a bond, escrow deposit, or other surety acceptable to the county uh, for the cost of decommissioning each tower, solar array, and related uh, improvement under the permit. So we do have some of this in here, but you know, this is a little, it's a little vague. Yeah, we need what, to take what, some out and let them. Yeah, what's gonna be acceptable to the county, it's, it's kind of open-ended. Well, I, I kind of wanted it. What's acceptable, county? That gives the, yeah. the commissioner some discretion. Yeah, yeah no, uh, that's, that's good. Because so this is also new. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned we're going to miss something or something new will pop up. So I, I want to leave some discretion to the elected. I can't believe I'm saying this to the elected officials. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's some flexibility in case there's, there's a topic we don't know about now that pops up in a couple of years. Because Tony, your, your point on lean is is a good one. I got to research that because real estate law is fairly structured. Oh, yeah. I don't know if there's a mechanism out there that would allow for it. Because we can do that on demolition of houses, right? Yeah, but the work's done. Yeah. I'm uh, not, let me do some research on that farmers, one. We're not going to back something that you're going to lean it. Yeah. Because it's a public authority that you're helping, and then you're going to come and let's say, Grandma did this, or kids yeah. went through school, and then at the end of 20 years, you take the farm because nobody's there to pay it bills. Yeah, the lien's the worst thing we could do. It has to hook into the natural grid. Mm -hmm. Make those people pay yes. for the cleanup. Yes. They got the benefit of it's like any other deal. They got the benefit, they got to pay for the cleanup. And one thing that came up, what I didn't even realize, and Porter County's looking into, is inverter noise. These panels, they're pretty big inverters, and you put them next to a house, they're pretty loud. Loud, you bet. And you need to screen those for noise. I didn't, didn't even realize if you get an inverter that size, those fans are loud. You know, setback from a home or setback for noise or decibel level. They're, everyone's looking at that. That's something no one saw coming, like you, Dougie said. You, you can't see everything that's coming here until we start doing some of these and then we're cleaning up the mess. It's moving very fast, but I, I agree with Joe. We need to somehow tighten up some of this to make sure. I, and I got more concerned because today it was announced that GM just has an agreement with Samsung SDI, and we all know that that might put New Carlisle back on the grid. And they'll need a lot of power. They're going to bank batteries. They're going to be a lot of power. They're going to need a lot. Of, they're going to be people looking at solar, St. Joe and LaPorte County, like we've never seen. Yeah. I suggest we set up a committee to go over what we have here and tighten some areas up and maybe some other areas of addition, because I just had a thought, require the bond to be five years, to re renew it every five years. That's a good idea. I like and there's it. less of a risk that the company's not going to be. Just That's just talking here, but I think a committee of four or five people might be a good idea to, to put this together. Okay. Renew every five years. What's the teeth in it? 
You hope the best. I'm not going to renew it. It's not making me any money. Well, that's a good, good question. <laughs> good question. I mean, it, it's really the hard. hardest thing down the line is you're not going to have the people start it. Most of these people sell off. Yes. They make their money, then they sell off. Another piece will come in, write all the tax laws and write that, get the free, no taxes in the county, and then they write theirs, and then pretty soon another one comes in. And The lien is horrible, but it's the only last resort the government has because that ground's not moving anywhere. And if they want to start farming again, those panels got to get moved. So maybe they want to farm again, they'll move the panels. But if they just walk away... Kids just walk away, third generation out. That that's going to fall on the government. Mm -hmm. I Take think those panels out. The farmers have some kind of agreement. Well, remember, public utility, public use. I mean, if you're going to use it, you got to pay for it when you're done. That's on, that's my case. Whether it's the government or whatever, it's if we can get a, some kind of insurance up front, that's fine. Or, or some kind of mechanism with the in, inflation that's hooked to the government's idea what inflation is every year and. My my first thought is escrow. I mean, they got the money. Those those people making the money are getting paid, and I don't care if they do it up front or they do it in five, ten, or fifteen years. If that fund is sitting there, we know it will be there. We need the audit or whatever. It will be there. There's no clawing that back. I think our decommissioning uh, plan it was well thought out uh, and very detailed. But when you get down into specific language, as you had said, this is this is coming. It's happening fast. We're seeing what other counties are up against and what they're dealing and repealing their ordinances. So, uh, for instance, uh, one sentence in there, it says um, a bond or escrow. Well, what does that mean? Is it the choice of the applicant? Is it the choice of the county? Uh, there, there's that. And, and who is going to, and it further states, um, to be reviewed uh, by the county in five years, 15 years. Well, that's going to be our successors. So are they going to do that? Is it going to fall through the cracks? These are good things for us to go over and consider now when we're tightening this up. Yeah, the, the one that says it's up to the commissioners, it doesn't get to the commissioners. It gets to you. It never gets back in front of the commissioners. The, the language is, Mike, you, you didn't read it far enough. It said, security acceptable to the county. I use the words the county because there may not may or may not be a building commissioner in 50 years. There might be a restructure of how it works. So some stuff we don't want to get too specific because then it's going to be completely irrelevant. So but it covers both. The, count, the county, you're the designee of the county. Okay, so it would be you. Okay. And, and what I'm hearing from the other counties is that they've had these lease agreements between the owner and the solar farm. And they say all these things and they come back and they say, you know, too bad. And they send a team of attorneys after you. Just to wear you down and they will do that to the county unless it's specifically in the ordinance like it has to be it's, you don't have a choice they can say well we're going to give you a bond because it says in your ordinance and they'll run attorneys after their counties just saying you know we got millions and millions of dollars here and we got tons of attorneys who will keep after you to accept the lowest possible solution a so it puts bit. mike under the the microscope because they're going to come after him and and doug and the county attorney they're going to run us ragged until they get what they want. Well, there's, it, it, that's kind of inevitable, no, no matter what. Where you're not going to draft an ordinance that's yeah. attack proof. You know. Switching gears slightly, but still relevant to the ordinance, are we going to uh, look at lot coverage on the larger commercial operations? In my mind, that's tough. I, a lot of people are asking for setbacks, 100 feet, 300 feet back. I don't see that easily defined. It could be trees, it could be forests. Uh, some are asking for screening. Uh, so if you put a 50 foot tall evergreen next to these panels, you just lost your solar. What use is it? You know, if we tell them that the screening has to be a mac, you know, has to be a maximum of eight feet, then it doesn't affect the solar panel. Those are all things we're gonna have to discuss. Because this Porter County was thought so much of it. And they're working hard all summer, which I hope we, I can work real closely with Porter County, see what they come up with. I think they're going to be a lot stricter than we ever will. Yeah, they're, I could see that for sure. I think that's why they repealed it. Is there any kind of uh, uh, legislative uh, action being taken on a statewide level in regards to solar? 
Not that I've heard. I've been working on batteries. Not that I've either. But I don't. I haven't heard anything on solar. And this is the last week, right? This is it. Yeah. This uh, is it. Yeah. I, we're not going to see anything this year on the batteries. Mm. Doug, did the solar? Um, there was a was a bill that was introduced at some point, and I don't think it went anywhere. But in relation to uh, if the county didn't have a solar plan, you had to go with. If you didn't already have a solar ordinance on the books, you would have to go with. So when we passed this, I want to say two years ago when I was up here and we did this, um, I think, first, first of all, I think we did a pretty good job for right out of the gate putting something in there because it's covering, I mean, it's not as tight as we necessarily might want it, but at least it's doing a good job of covering us in the interim while we can come up with exactly what we want. But it popped its head back up again this year that if a county didn't have its own solar ordinance, they would be subject to whatever the state decided. I haven't that, heard, that, I, don't, I haven't heard of anything think. passing on that. Yeah, I didn't think it, yeah. I didn't think it made it out of committee, but. Yeah. Just in the batteries, I mean, both both issues, I expect we're going to have to have several amendments as the technology advances. Yes. Okay. So who wants to be on a committee? We can't have more than four. I thought, didn't we already kind of have a committee? You want to stay on it? Me, you, and Harold? <coughs> okay. Sure. And we'll get with Doug. Right. We'll see if we get something moved faster than not. We'll watch closely with Porter County. What is the... What is the oldest solar operation in the country right now? That's a good point. <clears throat> and you look that up. Has anybody just checked Google and said, what's the oldest solar operation? And has anybody decommissioned one already? Let's, let's go back and track. Somebody did this 30 years ago, I'm sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how'd you find that information other than we'll start searching. Yeah, call county to county, I guess. I think we you can Google a lot of it. I mean, yeah. some, what was the first Google? What was the first solar operation to go into effect in the United States? I bet there's pretty close. Oh answer. yeah, good point. I mean, there's some things in there where a lot of communities are asking about what you do underneath the panels. You know, are is that hard surface? And most rules now say that it's not considered hard surface because if you look at any solar field, you're not getting the erosion and the runoff, you're just getting, they're trying, they're actually mowing it because so much grass is growing under there. It's not running off in horrible areas, unless it's on a steep slope. So that's one thing people started looking at can because they raise, thought... Can you raise pigs or chickens or something under yes. the soil Yes, and then, yeah, I brought that in, agrovoltaics. Goats and pigs, they, they eat the grass and they run around in the field. Uh, security about the fencing, you know, do you want people in there because these are very high-powered electrical things that somebody gets in and start messing with it. Let me explain so, some about animals. They eat everything. That's a I goat thought, can eat through almost any kind of conduit. I was going to ask Harold, would they start chewing on the wires? They will chew. They <laughs> used to do it with cow. They chewed it, all the valve stems and stuff off the tires and start on tires. It's unbelievable. They just got to chew. So, yes, you will get another environment. But their grass grows under them. I might add teenagers, too, by the way. 1992? Oldest? 1982. 1982 in uh, Europe. Swiss Power Network. No All right, so we'll have the commission and the committee and come back with some more ideas with Doug. Right. Any other old business? Any new business? None? Motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. 1982. 1982.